Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Actor, writer, and director Trevor St. John is stopping by to talk about his incredibly moving new film, A Good Enough Day, and his role as Tucker McCall on CBS's The Young and the Restless, which was just renewed for an additional four seasons through its 55th season. Congrats to all of our Genoa City friends. A Good Enough Day is available to stream on both Amazon, Apple, uh, TV Plus and Tubi. Trevor co-wrote, stars, and directs in the film, which are, also features daytime favorites, including Sherry Som and Josh Wingate. In the film, Trevor plays photographer Tyler Hamilton, a workaholic who finds out that he's terminally ill. To prepare himself for death, he decides to heal old wounds and reach out to those he's neglected. Please help me welcome to the locker room, Trevor St. John. Hey, Trevor. Hey, Alan. Thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. M my pleasure. And I know you don't love, you know, public speaking and press, so I really appreciate you doing this. Well, I I, I, I don't love it because I never feel like I'm any good at it. You know, as, as soon as the words come out, I think to myself, ah, that's not the way to put that. And, you know, so, I, but I, I'm so appreciative that you've asked me to come and well, also, uh, I watched your uh, interview on Maurice Bernard's show, which was really fantastic. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. Ma Maurice does a does a great job. Yeah, he does. He really set me at ease. That that's awesome. Well, congratulations. Truly, um, you know, a good enough day. I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, you wrote, directed, starred in this project, and I know um, watching it. It felt very personal. Mm. Would you share where the idea for the story came from? Well, um, the producer of the film, also the cinematographer, Don Hamilton, who also happens to be my stepfather, came to me and my cousins slash uh, brothers, Brett Clothier Sherman and Graham Sherman. And he said to us, uh, I have the means to be able to produce a modestly budgeted feature film. And if you can work within those means, let's shoot. Wow. And so uh, we thought to ourselves, OK, uh, there's some limitations here. And so we decided to work within those limitations. We said, and from my experience, you know, the, the great uh, depleters of budget are number of days shooting, obviously. And what and what requires numbers of days shooting number of setups locations or company moves we call it in the business and so we said okay let's make it take place the the narrative take place in one day in an essentially one location and so we knew we were working within those parameters and we spitballed for a while and then uh, as so often happens in a moment of relaxation you come up with an idea and graham was showering and said oh what if it's his last day and then we set about um, filling in the blanks and, and really uh, meticulously uh, outlining his relationships. Because when you think about you know, your last day, you think about the who in your life, right? And um, so we knew he was a photographer because we had this wonderful set. That's Don's uh, studio. Ah, I was just gonna ask that next since you uh, said you started, we're in one. Been a professional uh, filmmaker, still photographer, cinematographer for 40, around 40 years. And it's a wonderful set. And it's got sets within the set. It's got, uh, you know, the, the editing suite, the audio suite, it's got the catwalk and the, the basement, which used to be a, a dark room back in the day. And, and so we said, oh, he, let's make him a photographer. That's it. That's the premise. And in, in, on his last day, and what does he do? How does he deal with that? And uh, yeah, we just went from there, and we were able to work with on those parameters. And it was actually, you know, it's one of those uh, it's cliche, but you know, necessity being the mother of invention. It's, it was a nice way to to design a screenplay. To say, well, here's what we can't do, and then you're forced to use your imagination. And you know, I think it worked out pretty well. I do too powerfully um and a family affair had you worked with family before on anything uh, not really uh, but it was something that we always wanted to do come from a family of film lovers writers love language love great um, movies 
um, it's always been an undercurrent in our family, and we always we always knew we could do it. Um, I had a lot of talented people in my family, and um, and we just it, it was just a, a, a wonderful moment. As during the pandemic, when Don didn't have much else to do, we say, "Hey, let's really do it." We've been talking about it for years and talking about it, and uh, we just said, "Let's go." And and it was a wonderfully a wonderful family moment. You know, there was there were few conflicts. <laughs> uh, it, it it was seamless, really. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. You know, I learned a lot. There's some some things I might change, but not very many. It was a, a lovely experience all around. When you say uh, things you learned uh, by doing the film in general or working? Yeah, on well, I learned about, you know, how, because I've never helmed, I've never directed a film before. I'm, there are some things I might do a little different, but for the most part, I, I thought that uh, the directing aspect of it uh was pretty effortless for me, surprisingly. Um, uh, I actually don't know. I uh, now that you now that you mentioned it, maybe maybe I would just do it the same way again. I don't know. I just well, assume there must be something that I should do differently. Had you always wanted to direct? No. No. Interesting. No, I just uh, I just thought I I was probably the best person to direct it. You know, you when you're one of the co-writers you know, you're really inside this thing for a long time. And so images start to pop up. And, and when, you, when you're writing something and talking about it and rewriting it, those images keep popping. And, 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 when, they, and when the same image comes up, you know, that's, that's the shot. And then all you have to do is get there and design that shot that's been in your imagination for months. So being a writer, that's why, you know, writer, writer slash directors uh, make such great movies because they they live with the material for such a long time. Visually, it's in 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 your your headspace. That's right. Um, you have worked for a long time as an actor with many directors, mm -hmm. from One Life to Young and the Restless to all the films you've done. Is there somebody that sort of rubbed off on you while you were helming? Oh man, they all did. They all did. I mean, I don't want to, I hate to drop names and things like that, but um, Tony Scott's uh, positivity uh, rubbed off on me. He was he was helming this this giant. Uh, that's a uh, um, uh, Crimson Tide. Mm -hmm. Just a, such a positive. Guy. I, I happened to work on that, by the way. Oh, you did. I, I was doing PR for Disney when that came out. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> decades uh, ago. Right. Peter uh, Peter Berg was a great uh, actress director. Patrick Wang, who I've done three films with, wonderful actress director. Um, and just yeah, I, I think I think I, I absorbed a lot from watching them and the and the the way they approached it. Not necessarily studying the shots, not necessarily even studying the 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 product but how they were on a set, how they conducted themselves on the set, how they talked to the other. Of course, I, I only had, I didn't have to talk to very many other actors, mostly myself, but, but um, uh, yeah, just the way they conducted themselves. I, I, I gleaned a lot from working over the years. From well, I love hearing those stories where whoever you are in whatever field you are, using that environment to learn from like mm -hmm. just saying observing how they are how you know what they do i'm, so, I'm not a sponge on a set man i mean it was i was really meant to do this because i just take in everything and uh um, the combination of that and the, and the feeling that it's it was natural to me to begin with to be on a set it was it's a nice combination so i'm very curious always i think that's the best way to walk through yeah. life Right. <laughs> um, what do you hope people take away from the film? Well, of course, I hope they're moved by it, um, first and foremost. Uh, I hope it prompts them to ask some questions about their own life, even if, they're, if they don't feel like they're in even remotely close to those circumstances. Ask themselves what's important, um, what matters. 
Uh, I hope it provokes some thoughts in them in that regard. And also, I also would like them to feel respected. Mm. Um, I I feel, and so do, so do um, Graham, Brett, John. You know, filmmakers these days, I for the most part, I'm not going to say all of them, but there's a trend right now that, that, at least for me, makes me feel like when I see a film that the filmmaker doesn't think I have any emotional intelligence, that I don't have any intuition, that I must be led by the nose at every moment. I have to, I have, they must front load all the information to, to do away with any kind of mystery. I couldn't possibly endure, gosh, I wonder what's going on here. I'm intrigued, but I don't know everything. And I'm going to have to wait to find out. It's almost as if they can't take that. No, I, we can't have any mystery. We're afraid they'll just turn it off. And it is, a, is a, a, a delicate balance to keep them intrigued and yet withhold just enough. Hmm. And that's what we wanted. We really wanted them to feel like, gosh, thank you. We wanted to make a movie that we wish people were making for us. I wanted to make a movie that I wish filmmakers made for me. And there, I can't find them. <laughs> I was going to ask, is there maybe one you have seen recently that you felt? Mm -hmm. mm. No, the one that keeps coming up is is relatively old now. I mean, it, I guess you can consider it uh, of this era, but um, Sicario. I don't know if you saw Sicario. No. It's the last Hollywood movie that I've seen that res respected the audience. I mean, really respected their intelligence. Huh. Yeah, you have to look that up. <laughs> oh yeah, you need to see that movie if you're a fan of great writing. Great, it's a uh, Denis Villeneuve's uh, film uh, with uh, Emily Blunt. Love her. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the writing. It's really about the writing. The directing's fantastic, but the writing is just it's a lo it's a love letter to an audience, as far as I'm concerned. Oh wow! So, yeah. I, 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 Note taken. Yeah. <laughs> Note taken. Well, I I reached out to you after seeing the film because it hit me hard personally because it oh, really? it had just been uh, the one year anniversary of my cousin's passing from pancreatic cancer a oh. few days um, before watching it, um, and I really think the film will hit strike a chord emotionally with with viewers. Um, but yeah, I mean, and you know. The, that's the illness, right? You know. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, it. You know, circle of life. Unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, yeah. um, there are some really powerful uh, phone conversations that take place mm -hmm. throughout the film. And you, when you were talking to Maurice, you you, you talked about doing them live. Mm -hmm. Why was that so important? I love that. Well, we wanted to we wanted to have a feeling um, that what you were seeing sh almost that, that you should not be seeing that you're a fly. And then this is a little uncomfortable. I'm not I'm not, I'm not sure as an audience member I should be witness to this. It should be a little raw, almost documentary like. Um, and we so we wanted to to capture as much as we could that that spontaneity in that moment in that first take and and um and see these reactions happening in real time um so like the first the first phone call uh with the great uh, lisa fuller who plays my uh, sister that's the first take um we and with uh sherry Sam uh, that we, we did a couple of takes and then in the final one uh, with uh, Josephine Keefe, who plays Laura, that was one take. And you, this is this will be interesting to you. Um, that was the only part of the film that I, uh, the content of, I didn't know about. I didn't know what her current circumstances were. Brett and Graham were the only two people on the set who knew everything about what was going on. And the three of us decided that they would withhold that information from me until we shot. And so what you're seeing in that phone call is me hearing that information for the first time. And so the dialogue, so, you didn't know what- I had no idea what wow. she was gonna say to me when from, from, the, from the time I pick up the 
phone and I say, hi, Laura. Or she answers and I say, hi, Laura. I had no idea what was going to, none whatsoever, what was going to happen next. Wow. Brett and Graham did. And of course, uh, Josephine knew and she just kills it. Um, but we wanted, we had to really make sure technically that shot was going to be perfect. There were not going to be any focal issues. There are not going to be any lighting issues, sound issues. So we rehearsed the hell out of it technically first. And then, yeah, what you're seeing is, is me hearing it for the first time, but all the calls by those wonderful actors mm. uh, are mostly yeah, the one take. And, and we want to get that feeling like this is just too private. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I can uh, understand that now that you say it, you know, because you do, yeah. you feel like you're a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. in, in Right. In, yeah, we're getting some feedback that, that it felt almost like a documentary, which you can't get any better than that. If a, a scripted narrative feeling like a documentary. Oh, my gosh. What wonderful praise. What is it like having it out in the world now and getting reaction? um it's fantastic it's it's getting great reaction and uh, people are you know i saw it i i saw i witnessed it uh the we had a, a release party up in spokane we we screened it at the studio on the cyclorama wall and people were in tears you know it's it's people in tears after a drama is like hearing laughter in a comedy you can't <laughs> that, there you go there's there's the proof that it was working and people being speechless and, and hearing, hearing about people thinking about it for days afterwards, it popping up out of nowhere, um, the film and making them consider things. And, and so it's, I would love for it to become a hit, of course, but I mean, I, you know, I just, that just, just the fact that's that so many people have been moved by it. Like, like you said, you were moved by them. That, that, that means everything. There's a lot to be moved by in, in in the film, of course. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the final scene, you know, really was uh, really anchored by the great Josh Wingate, who played Dr. Matt, you know, um, was just a... Yeah, that's a, right. Yeah. That's He's a, great. That's Everybody, right. I mean, but yeah, that... Um, was there an element, you know, being involved in writing, producing, acting, directing, um, that you found the most difficult for yourself? Um, I think it was. I think it was perhaps having to deal with such a skeleton crew. I think we had thirteen crew members, and you know, I'm I've done independent films. I've done uh, modestly budget independent films, but <laughs> not that. <laughs> Uh, so everybody had to wear multiple hats, of course. And so then, so then how do you delegate things? Mm. You know, which, wait a minute, how many things are you doing? And then what's your job over here? And then even as the director, you have to do more things than a, a director would normally do. So there was some, some of the, 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 the mechanics of shooting with that, a, a sparse a, a, a crew, but everyone was so terrific. Again, everyone really stepped it up, and knowing that we ha they had to do extra work, uh, that was a, a bit of a challenge. But it wasn't. But it didn't. It didn't pose such a, a big challenge that it delayed anything, or made me uh, stressed or anxious about about it. It's just uh, it was challenging. It feels like a um, you know almost like a college you know project, like getting a group of your friends really together yeah. and. And and because of the love of cinema, you yeah. know, just going for it, and and yeah. we did, and it you know turned out beautiful. It felt like a bunch of friends getting together to play. It was it was so much fun. I mean, and it's and it's it's kind of a it sounds paradoxical that you given the subject matter that that fun would be the word that you would you would use, but um, it was a, it's always a blast. I mean, that's why I got in this business to to play around. You know, and and it felt like play for the entire time we were shooting. I love that. Do you currently have another story you'd like to tell? Oh, I have lots. Yes, you know we. Uh, uh, you know, one of the one of the things you always want to um, be prepared for in this business is the question: What else you got? <laughs> well, I like this movie. What else you got? Well, we got a lot. We've been writing a ton. 
we've got uh, I think three full length features or four wow. a series. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff that we we're ready to roll on. Did you always know you could write? No, I didn't. I didn't know that. I um, I started to write because I realized. I realized that, that if you're as an actor, if you're simply waiting around for an audition to book an audition, you're you know that's uh, that's like saying I, I'm going to make a living by playing the lottery. You know what I mean? Um, and you got to take matters into your own hands. And I've always been a fan of great writing. You know, always been a fan of William Goldman and all the masters. And and um, and I think with just time, I realized, oh, I, I can do this. And then with the, the aid of uh, the brilliance of of Brett and Graham, I mean, we can, and jo actually Josh Wingate and I wrote a screenplay together too. Um, you realize with minds like that together, maybe not my mind, but you know, whatever I am with those, those, those talents. Mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really I got it. Robin just said, just don't get too busy to leave your Tucker role. <laughs> okay, right, you got it. <laughs> um, Going back to Crimson Tide, um, I don't know if it was that movie. We had a junket, and I, I definitely met. We probably did more than one film with uh, Simpson and Bruckheimer. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about your experience doing that? Oh, wow. Well, that was a great experience. I mean, it was such a, you know, when you're, when you're a young actor and you walk into a sound stage and you, and you see this giant gimbal that the submarine was on that, that could simulate, you know, rocking of a, a boat. And the, and the, and all the fog that Tony Scott is known for, you know what I mean? You could only see about 15 front, feet in front of your face with so much. And um, it just felt like the big show, man. And then when when Gene Hackman, who is one of my idols, oh, wow. I mean, he's, he's one of the greatest actors who ever lived, as far as I'm concerned, walks in and I'm doing a scene with Gene Hackman, man. I mean... It doesn't get any better than that. Pinch you, pinch you. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And he was terrific, um, and Vigo was terrific. And as I said, Tony Scott was just the dearest man. He was a great guy. I love that. Um, so yeah, it was. It was just. It, it was again playful. Felt exciting because it's such a you know the it's the big show, man. Yeah. yeah, and it's and like you said, I mean, it's you know, as a film lover and acting, and to come into it, it's like a boy's dream. Yes. Oh, no, no question. You no, know, those kind of big, big, and then of course, it really is a dream because you love Gene. So, like, it was like dual dreams colliding. Oh man, I mean, yeah, he is. I mean, I could just we could spend that. And, the next half an hour talking about how great Gene is. And what, <laughs> what an influence he is on me to this day. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't well, matter more than Gene. That leads to one of the next questions I was going to ask. Who are some of your mentors? Oh, that's interesting. Mentor. You mean actors or anybody? Anybody. You know, who's... Well, the first person that always comes to my mind is Miles Davis. I don't know if you knew that I... That I, I do. I, the I, jazz, I, yes. Yeah. I think Miles is the top. I think he's the greatest. I think is, he's the greatest American artist who ever lived in any art form. Is he and, who led you into jazz? You kind of. Um, yes, actually, I guess, and not even kind of. Yes. The first time I heard a Miles Davis live in Europe and I heard Tony Williams on the drums, I thought, this is something else. And I have to pursue this. Because I was playing drums at the time. But I hadn't heard anybody play like that. And uh, Tony is just a huge influence. But Miles' fearlessness, and, and I, I don't even know how to describe what he is for me. I, I, I would like to approach Miles' perspective, point of view, you name it, at, uh, at some point. Miles is the pinnacle. He's hmm. the mountain for me. That's amazing. So, and, and how did the Jazz Fellowship come about? The what? The your Jazz Fellowship at uh, university. Oh, the scholarship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at, at the, my university, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, I just auditioned for it. Uh, they were looking for a drummer, and I had never done any big band uh, work before. <laughs> I came in and played a rock and roll solo, 
and uh, um, and they said, well, you know, you got some chops. We'll teach you how to play in the big band. I didn't know how to read music. Um, so yeah, I just I happened to be the guy. They saw something. Wow. Yeah. And so yeah, I was I was very lucky because uh, I don't, I wasn't going to go anywhere else for college. I didn't think so. And how did the transition to acting come? It was. Um, I, I saw that they were at, at Whitworth University. Uh, I saw they were auditioning for the Shakespeare play, As You Like It. And I had always thought that I could do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I had any justification for it, but, um, but um, I thought I can do that. And and I, I think I told um, Maurice this. <laughs> I, used to, I used to lay on the, on the, on the floor in front of the TV um, and watch these old movies with my dad. And I used to turn to him and say, what are these actors doing? You know, as a kid, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine years old, you know, what are these actors doing? That's not how people behave. And he would laugh at me and I just, and I just kind of, okay, I guess I think I know something. And then years would go by and I'd watch him and help people act. It's not how actual human beings behave. Why are these actors doing this? When I look over here and I see human beings do this. And so there was a little arrogance in my uh, um, decision to audition, but it turned out I guess I guess I had something on the ball because I got the lead in it. I, I played Orlando in it, and it just kind of and I thought, wow, I can do this. I can do this, and um, and I just kept getting leads in the, in the plays in college, and uh, and then. Um, uh, Rick Montgomery, the casting director, came to Spokane because he was doing um, casting for Benny and June, which was shot in Spokane. And I auditioned for him, and he said, "You got something on the ball here. You got you got something. You keep in touch. You should, if you want to move to LA, I'll you know I'll help you out. I was going to move to New York and do theater. Um, and so, but I decided, yeah, you got to go where you know people. <laughs> you had you had a little in. Yeah, yeah, and that's all the you know that's the business." Absolutely, yeah, you gotta use those. Yeah, but, you know, Lux, Lux more important. So um, somebody opening their mouth to you, right. follow that that person. <laughs> right, exactly. So and then it just kind of it kind of went from there, and I started working almost right away. Yeah, very lucky, very very fortunate. That's incredible, incredible. Um, let's let's talk about Tucker. What was it about the role of Tucker McCall that drew you back to daytime and the Young and the Restless? Uh. Well, I didn't know much about the role, to be honest with you. I just, uh, uh, just the sides that they had given me uh, for the audition. So I didn't know anything about it. But what I had heard from my friend Michael Easton, I don't know if you've interviewed him, but uh, on I General. Not, he's but, uh, I, I heard he was an influence on you taking this. So, yeah. Continue. Yes, exactly. Yes. So that's the answer. He said, um, you know, I hear great things about that set. Great people. Great uh, great production all around. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it turns out, it turns out he was right. And uh, I, I can't, I don't know how long I've been here now, but I, I keep waiting for something, something to go wrong here. Like, there must be some jackass around here. Some, <laughs> maybe it's me. That's probably what it is. I'm the jackass. But I mean, everyone is so terrific. It's unbelievable. Uh, I just really lucked out again. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, so, so that was what it was. It was, hey, this. Uh, Michael said, you know, you gotta, you gotta do this. It's a, it's a good set out here. It's a good people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great to have a friend who cares and shares that. You know, and, and the role turned out to be great. Um, yeah. and it was, it was fully formed, of course. Um, when I took it, so I just rolled with what, whatever they were giving me. Well, you know, reading the comments, uh, you're, 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 you're making your mark. But I, I wanted to read something from Gregory Reed. He said, I have to see your movie, but I watched One Life to Live intermittently, but was a huge fan when Trevor was on it. I put him in a league of actor you can't touch what this man can do. His portrayal of Todd to his current role as Tucker, his acting can't be described as a style. It's almost unable to be defined because what he does so few actors can do. Oh wow! You hate, him, you hate him. You love him. You're angry at him. You're moved by him because he takes you into so many directions as his characters. 
I long championed and hoped he'd play opposite Eileen Davidson because visually and emotionally, they are a soap super couple. And it ain't lost on me that Trevor is smoking hot. Yeah, you're making, you know, you're making your mark with uh, the audiences on on these shows. Oh, that's terrific. I, you know, I don't I, I, I hear some things once in a while, a lot of negative things, but I yeah, that's nice to hear. Yeah, that's great. Were, were you at the show at all this week to celebrate the uh, four-year renewal? I was not, no. But it's, it's, it's thrilling news for everybody, yeah. Yeah, a, a, absolutely. How would you describe who Tucker is today? That's a good question. I um, Speaking of you know what people say, I, I, I read recently uh, that Tucker was a villain, and I had no idea. <laughs> I know I try not to categorize a, a character that way. Um, you know, the, 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 the right answer, if a, if a, a character is well written is in the, of the question or to the question, um, is the character a villain or a hero? The, the, the best answer is yes. You see what I'm saying? The, the yes. best answer is, is this, is this character cowardly or heroic? Yes. Is he is he a misanthrope or a romantic? The answer is yes. You see what I mean? So so you, what you're looking for is always a character that, that might be one way in one moment and then the opposite in another. And so you can't pin him down. Hamlet is the pri is the is the mm. prime example. You, know, you can't describe Hamlet because he's never one thing. You know, he's, he's always he's a walking contradiction. Um, so, and, and I think Trevor, that, I'm sorry, Trevor St. John is not and one thing. Right? What's that? And Trevor St. John isn't one thing. Oh, yes, especially if you ask my wife. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so, yes, I, I'd like to think uh, 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 that Tucker, as I said, I didn't know he was a villain, but he can be villainous, but then he can be the, the opposite. He can be full of humor and then very dour. Uh, um, yeah, he can be he can be impatient and then have the patience of a saint and all every quality you can think of. I hope that there are moments where you contradict it. Mm -hmm. So um, it's hard. to. I, I, I hope that you can't pin him down. And that's well, why I approach it. Ms. Michelle said Trevor is fabulous as Tucker, a great blend of intelligence, intrigue and comedy. So there you go. Yes, I try to, you know, I, 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 and that's just born of a of a desire to. To again, like I was, like I was telling my dad, laying on the ground watching the, the you know, actors. Well, you know, there's human beings approach things with a lot more humor than than you see a, a lot on film and television. And I'm not talking about jokes. I'm not talking about comedy. I'm talking about that's how you cope. And um, so I'm always kind of looking for that because that's more human. I think not to be fun. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be human. Does that make sense? I, I totally, because I, I think about like my own relationship. I didn't realize how much humor was right. important. You and, couldn't get through it. You couldn't yeah. get through it. Even if you're not a funny person, humor is always what gets through, gets people through everything. You could be considered, no, that person's not funny, but I can tell you that, that if that person's getting through life, they have they have to employ some sense of humor. Right. I, I'm not going to get up and do stand-up comedy, but you know, we yeah, make I couldn't possibly no. No, yeah. we make each other laugh, and that's the best thing, right. best medicine, as I say. That yes. right there is. That's yeah. Right. That's so interesting. I I, I love the way you, you uh, describe that. Well, you also uh, work with some incredibly talented people, mm -hmm. um, and as you know, Gregory said about pairing with Ms. Eileen. Um, talk about working opposite her. She's doing some phenomenal work right yes, now i'm really seeing her doing incredible. with with, with uh, you know her 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 uh uh <laughs> i don't know i was gonna yeah, say know, addiction, much to, addiction to tucker or yeah. <laughs> i don't know the word <laughs> right yeah. yeah no she's really talented i mean uh, and just recently i've seen her step it up into another level um we just did a scene yesterday. I don't. I can't tell you, of course. Right. Yeah. Don't. Me, don't don't have Matt come after me. <laughs> I was so, 
uh, at the risk of sounding condescending, I, I, I just couldn't think of, a, of a, a better word than so proud of her. I mean, it's just, and she's been asked to carry this load um, with this storyline. She's doing it beautifully. She's really doing it beautifully. I'm, I'm so happy to see her thriving and flying this way. She's great, really great. And please help me because I don't want to pronounce it incorrectly. Z Zuleika? Yeah, Zuleika Silver. Z Zuleika Silver. I mean, you, you've you you've got one on each arm there. Yeah, man, and she's she's great. I just adore Zuleika, and um, we we feel like. Um, play partners and it's really a joy to become her friend and um uh, i just i just enjoy her company on set and she's such a dear person um so i'm very lucky and she's also talented and and uh, and open and open to things i might throw at her you know and and uh not literally but um <laughs> Um, she, she might be the one throwing. Right. Yeah. No, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, so I'm. Yeah, she's terrific, and and so I'm very lucky right now to be working with those two. Yeah. Is there someone you'd love to uh, work with a little more? Uh, you know, I I, I really I don't want to single anyone out. I, I I I really enjoy working with everybody here. I mean, again, it sounds like. It sounds like BS, and I still can't even believe it. But I really enjoy working with with all these pros. They really are professionals. I can't think of a. Pro I mean, there's some people I've never worked with that I'd like to work with. I'd like to work with everybody in the in the cast. It's just that your storylines don't. Yeah, you, you may never see them. Yeah, um, you may never see them. But yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to get a chance to uh, to work with everyone. Yeah, I mean, Melody just celebrated 45 years, right? Right. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've done one one scene in the whatever, how long I've been here. And, and my other dear friend who's there playing Aunt Jordan, Colleen Zank. Oh, yes. You, work, you must have worked with her on I this. did. I did. Yeah. People people seem to be enjoying her craziness, too. Oh, good. Everyone, you got to love crazy. You got to have. Yeah, there's got to be, you know, you know, there's daytime without crazy there'd be no daytime tv right. and, and speaking of crazy you landed the role of todd mm -hmm. you know in 2003 what do you yeah. remember about that audition and screen test um yeah audition well actually i went in to audition for the role of kevin buchanan oh wow the one of the kevins right yeah i really went to uh, the great um, and my dear friend, um, Dan Gauthier, and they got it right when they cast him, who is incidentally um, probably the finest acting coach on the West Coast currently. Wow. Um, so I went in and uh, what was interesting about it was that the scene was because Kevin's a businessman and the scene was written to, to be taking place in an office. And I auditioned in Frank Valentini's office at the studio and they had this t in tape on the on the floor where the camera would shoot and the light was set there <laughs> and, uh, I, I i knowing that it was taking place in an office i looked at frank and i said hey can i use the room it's supposed to be an office right and he looked at me askance and said uh yeah i guess so <laughs> and i proceeded to walk around his office opening drawers cabinets <laughs> Sitting on the couch and the camera, the camera operators having to, to crane the to, to pan the camera over in this unlit section, and then go over here, and and it was just all over the place. And uh, they obviously thought um, this guy's not Kevin, but they they must have seen something in the I don't know, whatever you want to call it, call it the recklessness, the spontaneity, or whatever that they mm -hmm. must oh, Todd. And uh, uh, and then I screen tested shortly thereafter, which is no, no big story there. But that was the most interesting memory of the of the audition because I had a, I have a feeling that nobody else did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do too. And most actors, oh, you want me to stand there? Okay, I'll stand there. You know. Did so, you have to screen test with Cassie? I or? did screen test with Cassie. Yeah, I believe so. I think I screen tested with 
Cassie and maybe one other person, but definitely Cassie. Yeah, who is lovely. Yeah, I mean, again, you you know, it's lucky to be paired with uh, so many great people. Um, had, you hadn't done daytime before one life, had you? No, it was a no. very different thing. Yeah, coming from your film world and yeah. all the TV you had done, what was it a sort of culture shock a little at first? Yeah. Dan Gautier, who was my roommate, and I came from similar backgrounds. We were hired about the same time. And we would go into the dressing room and just think, what, what is this? <laughs> this is like nothing we've ever done with it. Well, first of all, the quantity. I mean, remember having 30 to 40 pages of dialogue a day. And uh, yeah, the volume of work, the pace. Does that uh, scare? Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine like if I came from a different medium and then all of a sudden you're thrown into that without really a huge knowledge of it it might be oh daunting. yeah it was daunting it was daunting and 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 of course you wanted to do the best stuff you could and so you try to prepare and you had to prepare 30 40 pages and then the next day you had to it was just it was just physically overwhelming and but the you know the brilliant thing about it is eventually you have to to give up the idea of the perfect result and you just kind of and it and really it was kind of serendipitous because, you know, like I said, I'm always trying to be to live up to Miles' standard. And this medium forces you into that mindset that you're just free. And you just let whatever happens happen. And and that's actually the way it should always be, even in single camera stuff, even on stage. And but this medium um, really forces you to 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 be improvisational, not not dialogue improvisation, but spontaneous, spontaneous and um, and free. Uh, otherwise, you can get bound up in because I've got so much. I'm going to be trying to be precise with all this material, and it's that's a a losing proposition. Did you come to that on your own, or did somebody you know a lesson somebody you know imparted? Uh, well, you're know, talking a lot with Dan and then I started working with, um, Harold Guskin in New York city. Um, and, uh, he opened some big doors for me. Um, I, cause I, I started seeing him because I was afraid that I, you know, I, I, I might just kind of get in a, in a rut and I wanted to continue to be fresh and, and work on, work on the other material and. And he encouraged me to go even further into what I was already doing, um, and so that was that was helpful. But a lot of it was a lot of it was just the enjoyment of the moment. And you realize that the that the acting has to be enjoyable in, as you are doing it, rather rather than concentrate. Well, how is the product going to look? How's it going to look to the audience? How, 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 you know, what kind of marks am I going to get from the viewers and all that stuff? You've got to let all that go and enjoy yourself as it's happening. And that's the jazz. That's the jazz stuff. Hmm. And, and uh, this and again, this medium forces that because otherwise it's work. And I didn't get into this to have a job. It's nice to have the work. <laughs> yeah, I'm very grateful to have the job and the work. But but you you you, you like see work. Say? It, 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 this is supposed to be play. Yeah, and if you're constantly thinking about I got forty pages and I have to make this right. I have to do this right. It's just it's, it's almost impossible. So you can either do it right and try to get a good result, or you can play. You can't do both. And I decided I'm going to play. Wow irrespective of the result. So those 10 years must have really helped this role on YNR. Oh yeah. Be be full on play really cuz yes. Oh absolutely. It can it, it the, the muscle kind of came back. It took me a couple months. Um but the the the, the muscle for this genre kind of kind of came back and and yeah that and then since then I had you know done so many other movies and and the single camera shows. And I had taken the approach into that too. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh yeah, because as I said, that's really the right approach no matter the genre. 
Right. Is yeah. I love, I love that. Uh, yeah. As we said earlier, your, your friend Sherry um, is in a good enough day and, and she's, you, re yeah. you recently lost uh, Kamar. Would you share memories of dear Kamar? I don't know if I can. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, you shouldn't be sorry. It's a very <laughs> good question. I don't know. It's it's a tragic loss. Too young, too young. Um, sorry. No, no, no. Please, please, please. Um, you you worked on the grief of others in 2015 with Wendy yeah. Moniz, who I worked with on oh, on, yeah. on Getting Light, and yeah. and it's one of those films that's been on my list forever because I've heard how great it is, and I I need to see it. Yeah, that's Patrick Wang's film. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a wonderful, wonderful director. Good friend of mine. Yeah, you should definitely see it. You well, should. Definitely. Was that a fun experience? Oh yeah. I assume because you you spoke of Pat, uh, Peter. Oh Irwin. yeah, I mean, he he he's my probably my favorite director I've ever worked with, and and uh, and he just digs that what we just talked about. That's what he wants from me. You know, he wants he's you know. He said, I love working with you because I can give the editor 15 different colors. Each take is slightly different. I can just mix and match here and there. And so he encourages that, that sense of don't worry about the result. You just go. And uh, so that's what you want. You want a director who, who encourages that approach. And, and he's, he's great. He's such a good writer and such a, a gentle soul deep feeling person and and um I'm, I'm proud of I'm proud of that film I'm proud of my work in that film that's awesome i i'm gonna watch i mean i've it you know you keep those lists books movies so many things to see um oh, yeah. and i wanted to see wendy in it because i i think she's, yeah, wendy's, yeah wendy's great yeah she's a phenomenal actress um jason also said i i'd sum up trevor's portrayal of tucker as true charisma he had so much to and elevates the material to a whole new level oh, thank you um you've done so much first i so two parts um you talked about college and doing many stage roles do you have a favorite stage role you've done uh yeah i played um i played joe keller in all my sons the arthur miller play Hmm. And uh, he's 60 years old in the play. And I was 19 when I played him. And so I really, <laughs> I really had to do some, some work, you know, and I, and, and I studied, I studied my dad, who was uh, around 60 at the time, uh, how he moved. Um, I put, um, I did things like put these sharp pebbles in my shoes. So every time I walked, every time my foot hit, it hurt a little bit. Um, I did, a, I did, I worked on my own makeup to really make my face craggy, craggy and, and, and blind. Um, and I think I pulled it off. I, I, it was just fun to, it, that felt like that again, felt like play. Uh, this is, you know, acting, you know, the whole trans transformation thing, you know, uh, so that was a that was a challenge and a lot of it was a it's a terrific play Arthur Miller so great and I just I'll, I'll never forget. Trying it's to, so uh, funny the last I feel like in the last couple of months almost every actor I've talked to has done an Arthur Miller. <laughs> yes, you, if you're so lucky, yeah, yeah, you try to do an Arthur Miller if you're an actor. I, I mean, I was in the Crucible in high school. Oh, really? Uh, you know, like I, I think an extra role, but yes, yeah, I did yeah. that. Yeah. But it's it, it really has been funny. He he keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the fans asked earlier, and I didn't want to forget, uh, they were asking about working with Angela Lansbury on Murder, oh. She Wrote. What do you remember? I remember she was so, um, she, she was very generous. And she, in fact, she, um, she, I didn't even have to audition for that. That's one of the few times that I, that I, you know, had a straight offer because she saw me in this um, movie with where I played Glenn Close's son called uh, Serving in Silence. And uh, she'd seen me, seen it on television and said, I, I, I want this guy to come in and play this role. And so from the, from the outset, I thought, wow, I like this person a lot. Well, you know, <laughs> nice 
Yeah, and then of course she was terrific on set, and and you know it's just something. Wow. Who's been there, done all that, just seasoned, but but in the in the best way, you know, because a lot of a lot of those kind of legendary people can turn it negative, and and you know. Yes, 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 yes. She was, she was really kind and sweet. You know. I mean, did you pick up the phone and call mom and dad and be like Angela and Lee? Yeah, got straight off. Me. <laughs> yeah, little I know that would just go away instantly right afterwards. Right? But, <laughs> oh yeah, I got a straight offer. I, I think I might make it in this. In but this I mean, point. to be able to say, you know, Angela Lansbury wanted yeah, me. Angela saw there. me on TV and called and, and hired me. Yeah. Wow. I, I should have retired right there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is a a solid um, solid uh, you know affirmation. I would yes, say it was nice. It was a, a, a huge compliment. Uh. Favorite on-screen role? Wow. Well, you know, I, 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 it might take too long to kind of uh, run down the <laughs> the list. Um, I, got, I, I just maybe it's just because of the timing. I'm really enjoying Tucker right now. You know, I, I think I think it's, a, I think it's a, he's a complex character. I mean, if I really had time to think about it, I might be. A, uh, another well, one. And, and, you know, by the probably. reaction, by the reaction I'm today, I'm enjoying myself now. Say it again. I'm enjoying myself, and I'm I'm enjoying uh, this guy, you know. Um, and I'm it's just it's it, it's fun to be allowed to be this uh, free. And I got to um, that said, I have to I have to shout out to the directors. And uh, the producers who are saying, well, let him, let him go, you know. Mm. Yeah, it hasn't always been that way. <laughs> yeah, they don't always. Yeah, I, I, I've watched a few uh, things in daytime. They don't always just let you go. No, um, I feel very, I feel very uh, appreciated here. That's awesome. Uh, it's really a nice feeling. Um, I, I get this feeling like they, they feel. Fortunate to have me now. Whether they actually are or not, so, you know, I don't know. But uh, um, I feel you don't need to know. You don't need to know. No, 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 like, it seems like that, and of course, as a result, I I just I, I love being here and and um, uh, enjoying enjoying the gig. Uh, hey, I mean that's that's what we all hope for, right? Yeah. Um, your your son Aiden is going to turn seventeen, right? Yeah. Um. Any inkling that he might follow in Dad's footsteps? He doesn't. He doesn't seem to be interested at all uh, in it. He likes films. He likes to watch movies, um, but he doesn't hasn't shown any interest. I would not discourage. I wouldn't encourage or discourage it if he wanted to do it. You know, I'd certainly have all the wisdom to be able to to set him down the right path. Uh, but he hasn't shown any any particular interest. In it, and he hasn't even shown any interest in micro. He, <laughs> he texted me the other day, wanted to know what the name of the TV show I was on is. <laughs> he was with his buddy, yeah, my dad's an actor. Yeah, what's I don't know, uh, uh, Young and the Restless. Maybe, maybe he was trying to impress a girl. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Right. That I love that, Dad. What show are you on? Oh, yeah, man, he, he doesn't know, he has never seen it. He's never, you know, that is funny. How did fatherhood change your life? Oh, you know, I mean, it's a again, it's a cliche, but it's 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 the most uh, powerful thing that can ever happen to you. It's uh, you know, everyone's you when 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 you talk to a friend who's about to have a kid, you say, you know, your life is you're going to discover something biologically. This a, 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 switch is going to be flipped and you can't imagine what it is. And yeah, I know. I said, no, you can't imagine what it is. And then they have the kid and they say, yeah, I had no idea this existed. This kind of this, the, the depth of the love you have for this creature. It's just, it's something else. It's indescribable. Um, so that's, it's, you know, you could go into the, 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 the mechanics of being a parent, but really it's just that the, the, the you didn't realize that you could love something that that deeply. That's the nice thing about it, which makes the movie mm. 
Uh, if you don't want to circle back to the movie, that's okay. No, no, no. It, it does. I just had a thought. No, that makes yeah. the movie that much more for me. Oh, I, I, powerful. On many levels, because of your your son and daughter in the film. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You so know. The, you know the nature of what it would be like to if you, you've experienced that love and then to lose lose it. It's just too much. It's uh, the greatest pain. In no, it. I mean that is. That is a loss. Uh, I I don't wish on anybody ever, you know, a parent losing a child is, and I and I know I'm sorry that you lost your sister at a very young age. So I'm very sorry about that. Uh, your 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 dad and you lying on the floor, Trevor. No. You know, making those comments. What have the conversations been like? sense and and him seeing your success and i don't know what was the first film role you got that you know you called home and <laughs> i think uh the first film role that i got that he probably watched it might have been crimson tide uh not a small film no not a small film um uh the first film i did was higher learning the john singleton movie and i played a skinhead <laughs> in that movie. I don't know if he saw that, but he definitely saw me in Serving in Silence, the Glenn Close film. Um, oh, God, that was amazing. Yeah, that's a good film. That's a that really is a great film. film. Yeah. Um, the, I, the Marguerite story, right? Marguerite? Yeah, Hammermeyer, exactly. Yeah, Hammermeyer. Um, I don't know. He's, I don't know. Uh, he, he, he's never been the kind of guy that says, uh, wow. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's kind of, it's a little bit like my dad, or my sorry, my son. A little bit like my son. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not even watching. What are you on? Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. Did they support this career path? Yes, they did. Yeah. My both my mom. My mom was actually, I should shout out to my mom because she was she was on the set. She's this genius woman who can do anything. And she was she would just handle whatever whatever needed to be done. She could do wardrobe, makeup, set decoration, anything she, she could do. And she's just uh, really a, a, a gift, of course, to my life and and uh, and the film. And and uh, she she both she and my dad were were very. Uh, of course, this was after my my mom and dad were divorced, but still they were very. Um, encouraging of this of moving down to LA and giving a shot and I and now that I I have a kid I can realize how scary that might be for them because yeah we're going to encourage you to be an actor you're out of your mind <laughs> you know can't you do something with some stability you know maybe getting a degree in something worthwhile you know pursuing a career of uh, a, a regular career but no I was lucky in that in that they uh that they encouraged me all the way. Well, and it, it has paid off. Yeah. You know, I think having encouragement always helps us succeed. Right. You know, Trevor, such a pleasure to meet you. Um, well, nice to meet you, Alan. Thank you so much for doing this. My, my pleasure. Please tell Kristen she was she was 100 percent correct. You, you, you're you're a good egg, <laughs> oh, and and please give her a hug for me on set and Vivi, and I I adore Hello. them both. Okay, you, you 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 be well. I hope everyone please see a good enough day. It's on Amazon, uh, Apple TV Plus, and Tubi. Check right. it out, and and, if, and, and send her a message to let him know what you think. Yes, please, and and send me a message, and and, and even more importantly, please if you like it please leave a, a user review and you can find the, the links to do so on the landing site. Oh, okay. Great. I don't know if you can put that in your show notes, the landing. Yeah, site. I, I will. I will put that up on YouTube and, and yeah. I will do one as well. I mean, I, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, would you? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so uh, on, on one of the. Yeah. Um, there's Rotten Tomatoes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And IMDb and um, Letterboxd. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, if you could do just one, all three would be great. But if you could do just do one, uh, that would really be a, a great uh, help to the success of the film going forward. 
Uh, I'm glad you said so. So thank you. I'm I'm glad we uh, mentioned that for everybody, and I will put it up there for sure. Perfect. Thank you, Alan. I really appreciate it. You have a great afternoon, and we'll, we'll talk soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Again, thank you to Trevor St. John for spending the hour. And please, everybody, check out A Good Enough Day. Don't forget to watch Trevor weekdays on The Young and the Restless at 1230 Eastern. I hope you'll join me tomorrow when the bold and the beautiful's John McCook and Jennifer Garris join me live at 3 p.m. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for... Uh, upcoming reminders. And if you like today's episode, which I certainly hope you did, please click the like button. And uh, if you like to stream audio versions, you can just search the locker room on your favorite streaming platform. Have a great afternoon, everybody. And as always, please stay safe.